The decision today is not without cost here at home. Putin's war is already hurting American families at the gas pump. Since Putin began his military buildup on Ukrainian borders, just since then, the price of the gas at the pump in America went up 75 cents. And with this action, it's going to go up further. I'm going to do everything I can to minimize Putin's price hike here at home. In coordination with our partners, we've already announced that we're releasing 60 million barrels of oil from our joint oil reserves. Half of that, 30 billion, million, excuse me, is coming from the United States. And we're taking steps to ensure the reliable supply of global energy. We're also going to keep working with every tool at our disposal to protect American families and businesses. Now, let, me, let me say this. To the oil and gas companies and to the finance firms that back them, we understand Putin's war against the people of Ukraine is causing prices to rise. We get that. That's self-evident. But, 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 but. It's no excuse to exercise excessive price increases or padding profits or any kind of effort to exploit this situation or, Amer or American uh, consumers. Exploit them. Russia's aggression is costing us all, and it's no time for profiteering or price gouging. I want to be clear about what we'll not tolerate, but I also want to acknowledge those firms and oil and gas industries that are pulling out of Russia and joining other businesses that are leading by example. This is a time when we have to do our part and make sure we're not taking, we're not taking advantage. Look, let me be clear about uh, two other points. First, it's simply not true that my administration or policies are holding back domestic energy production. That's simply not true. Even amid the pandemic, Companies in the United States pump more oil during my first year in office than they did during my predecessor's first year. We're approaching a record levels of oil and gas production in the United States, and we're on track to set a record oil production next year. In the United States, 90 percent of onshore oil production takes place on land that isn't owned by the federal government. And of the remaining 10 percent, that occurs on federal land, the oil and gas industry has millions of acres leased. They have 9,000 permits to drill now. They could be drilling right now, yesterday, last week, last year. They have 9,000 to drill onshore that are already approved. So let me be clear. Let me be clear. They are not using them for production now. That's their decision. These are the facts. We should be honest about the facts. Second, this crisis is a stark reminder to protect our economy over the long term, we need to become energy independent. I've had numerous conversations over the last three months with our European friends of how they have to be wean themselves off of Russian oil. It's just not, it's just not tenable. It should motivate us to accelerate the transition to clean energy. This is a perspective extended that our European allies share and the future where together we can achieve greater independence. Loosening environmental regulations or pulling back clean energy investment won't, let me explain, won't, will not lower energy prices for families. But transforming our economy to run on electric vehicles powered by clean energy with tax credits to help American families winterize their homes and use less energy, that will, that will help. And if we can, if we do what we can, it will mean that no one has to worry about the price of the gas pump in the future. That'll mean tyrants like Putin won't be able to use fossil fuels as weapons against other nations. And it will make America a world leader, manufacturing and exporting clean energy technologies of the future to countries all around the world. This is the goal we should be racing toward.